Okay. First question is how to understand my calling and when to respond to my calling. Swali la kwanza katika huduma ni kwamba nitaelewa vipi mwito wangu na nitajuaje ni wakati wangu wa kuitikia ule mwito umewadia. I want to say that the first thing very important is that we trust that God has a very wonderful plan for each person. Nataka kusema kwamba jambo la kwanza lazima uamini kwamba Mungu ako na mpango wa ajabu katika maisha ya kila mmoja. If we love him and have a good relationship with him and take care of different problems, he will guide us step by step. Kama tutampenda na kumwamini, alafu tushughulikie matatizo ambayo tunayo, Mungu huyu atatusaidia katika hatua zote ambazo tutakazozipita. We also need to build our ability to serve God. Na pia lazima tujenge yale mazoea ya kumtumikia Mungu. Anyone who has a heart to serve God, first thing, he must have a good relationship and then when he sees people he wants to help them and bless them yule mtu ambaye ana moyo wa kumtumikia Mungu anakuwa na na anajenga yale mazingira ambayo yatampa wepesi wa kumtumikia Mungu na anapoona mtu yote akija njia yake atakuwa tayari kumsaidia na kumbariki so in the church he wants you care about people and help them spiritually pray for them build up their spiritual life akiwa kanisa basi akuwe na mazoea ya kuwajali wale wale wanaokuja kanisani kuwasaidia na kuwajenga maisha yao ya kiroho. In this process he will learn how to do ministry. Katika mambo hayo unapoyafanya hivyo inakufundisha wewe jinsi ya kufanya huduma. And when it's time God will let him know. Na muda wako basi wa kuenda kufanya huduma nje ndani ya kanisa ukifika Mungu atakufungulia macho ya kiundani na utaona kwamba umefika Mungu atakuwezesha kutambua kama umefika. God will also open the way. Na Mungu pia atafungua njia zako za wewe kwenda kufanya ule huduma. But the first thing he does when he you know first he help people individually and then he helps the church and the pastor. Lakini kile anachokifanya cha kwanza huyu Mungu ni kwamba atakusaidia wewe binafsi akisha kusaidia wewe binafsi utawasaidia wale waliopo kanisani ukisha wasaidia wale waliopo kanisani pia utaanza kusaidia mchungaji wako kanisani kazi ya kulichunga kanisa in the process God will guide him when you know whether he will continue with this or he will uh, start a new ministry God will guide him na sasa Mungu atakuongoza kana ya kwamba ukisha fikia muda wa kwenda kuanzisha huduma wako Mungu atakusaidia ujue kwamba wakati umefika People who have a calling from God will continue to feel the calling from God. Wale watu walio na mwito kutoka kwa Mungu wanaendelea kuhisi ule mwito wa Mungu. But if the person doesn't have a good relationship with God, he won't be able to hear from God. Lakini mtu huyu kama hana mahusiano mazuri na Mungu basi hawezi akasikiliza chochote kutoka kwa Mungu. Then he will fall away from the perfect plan of God. Na sasa ataanguka atoke katika mpangilio wa Mungu. Okay? Now, when I answer a question, if you still have question related to that, ask that right away and I'll respond. If not, I, I assume that I have answered the question. Akijibu swali ambalo umeuliza na unasikia kwamba haujashiba. Hebu simama tu kwa wakati huo huo uendelee uulize mahali ambapo haujashibishwa. Okay, the question can only be related to what I just answered. Na swali ambalo naliuliza liwe linahusiana na kile ambacho amekizungumza sasa hivi. When you have question run to the front. Kama una swali basi run to the front. Yaani ukimbie uje huku mbele. And come and get the microphone and ask and ask quickly. Uje uchukue kipaa sauti. So say time. Na uulize haraka ili tukomboe muda. And be brief. Na uwe uwe mfupi wa maneno. Wanesa sikiwe. Simama hapa. Sijaelewa ule wito maana yake ule wito she has not understand what is the meaning of calling okay the calling it will start like this that we will feel motivated to care about the people in the church mwito ni kwamba utasikia kwamba umechochewa ili uanze kufanya vitu kanisani za kuwajali watu kanisani that the the person will feel a motivation to help people when you see people who are spiritually weak he will have a motivation to help them spiritually kwa kwamba huyu mtu anasikia kwamba amechochewa anapomuona mtu ambaye yeye ni dhaifu kiroho ama ana matatizo fulani atasikia ana msukumo wa kwenda kusaidia huyu mtu and a thought will come into his mind that he wants to serve God in some way that um, you know and a thought will come from God to this mind 
that he wants to serve God in some way. Na sasa katika mawazo yako pia Mungu ataanza kuweka vitu katika mawazo yako ya kuambia kwamba sasa umefika wakati wewe kwenda kufanya kazi mahali fulani. And then when he does one aspect of ministry like helping people individually and then God will put it, put in more ideas how to raise up to a higher level. Kwa hivyo wakati utakapokuwa unaposaidia watu kanisani kibinafsi Mungu ataanza kukupa yale mawazo akayapanua jinsi mnavyoweza kuwasaidia hao watu kwa njia iliyo sawa sawa. So this is the call, the motivation from God. Yaani mwito ni kule kuchochewa kunakotokana na Mungu. Okay? Now the next question, how to plant a ministry? Swali lingine lilikuwa jinsi ya kupanda huduma. Now first the person must have the calling and have the experience of doing ministry. Aha, kabla ya mtu hajaenda kupanda huduma, lazima awe na ule mwito na pia awe na yale, awe na ule ufahamu wa kujua kwamba akitaka kupanda huduma hiki ndicho atachofaa kukifanya. First he has ex, you know the the calling from God and then he has experiencing of help the experience of helping people spiritually ya kwanza ana mwito unaotoka kwa Mungu na pia ana ule ufahamu wa kujua kwamba vile alivyokuwa akiwasaidia wale watu kanisani kufanya vitu fulani fulani lazima uwe na huo ufahamu if he has a motivation to start a ministry he should first be helping another ministry for a period of time so he has more experience. Basi kama ana ule mwito wa kupanda kanisa, ni lazima awe alikuwa chini ya kanisa fulani na ameona vile lile kanisa linavyoendeshwa na amejifundisha vitu kutoka kwenye hilo kanisa. Sasa ana ufahamu anaweza kwenda kulianzisha kanisa manake anajua jinsi anajua wapi atakapoanzia. And then finally he find that he is equipped to do ministry on his own and then motivated by God to start a new ministry then well first he should discuss with the pastor huyo mtu basi kabla hajaenda kulipanda kanisa amekuwa ndani ya kanisa lingine lazima mambo haya ajadiliane na yule mchungaji ambaye alikuwa anafanya kazi chini yake whether he will you know start help the church to start a branch or start a new ministry by himself ili kwamba huyo wa kubaliana na huyo mchungaji kwa mfano kama lile kanisa ambalo yumo ndani ndilo litakalomtuma lile limsaidie kupanda huduma ama kama ako na uwezo wa kuanzisha kanisa lake yeye mwenyewe it's easier that the church he was in will help him to have some people work together with him to start a new church is easier than one person starting a new ministry na ni la muhimu sana basi kama majadiliano yale yatakuwa ya ya njia nzuri lile kanisa ambalo yumo ndani litamsaidia kwa mfano anapoondoka kwenda kulipanda kanisa lingine kuna watu ambao wanatoka kwenye hilo kanisa waende wasimame naye hadi atakavyokomaa sasa atabaki amesimama peke yake now the first thing when he started a new ministry do not steal people from his original church aha sikia hili jambo kwa makini sana unapoenda kuanzisha huduma Utoke mkiwa na amani ili kwamba unapoenda huko usiwe kikwazo ya kwamba unakuja tena kuiba washirika wa hili kanisa ambalo umelitoka ndani unless if the pastor agrees to send some people to help him start a new church ama mchungaji wa hilo kanisa awakubalie wale ambao wataenda kusaidia kusimama na hilo kanisa lakini usije ukawaiba Okay. And then to start a new ministry, if there's nothing, the first thing to do is just go to the street and gather people, you know, one or two or three, that's how we start. Basi, kama unaenda kulianzisha kanisa na hauna mtu, enda kwenye street tunasema hivi. Kule njiani, kule mjini. Aha, kule mjini, njia panda. Anza kuhubiri injili, ukiwa kusanya watu, alafu unaenda kusanya kuanzisha kanisa usiende kuiba washirika wa kanisa lingine and there are different ways to gather people to uh, like for instance to meet the needs and help them or visit them and pray for them and there are different things we can do to bring people to Jesus kuna vitu vingi ambavyo unaweza fanya unaweza watembelea unafanya uinjilisti wa nyumba kwa nyumba unakutana na watu wale na matatizo unawasaidia alafu unawaleta kwa Kristo Yesu 
And we will talk about how to do evangelism with the power of the Holy Spirit in one session. Aha, kuna kipindi ambacho tutafundisha kuhusu kufanya uinjilisti ukiwa chini ya nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu kwenye kipindi kimoja. And also how to bring some people to serve God in another in, in a session. Na jinsi ya kuinua watu wengine ili wakamtumikie Mungu kutakona kipindi chake pia. Okay, has I have I answered the question? Huyo mtu wa uinjilisti amesikia hayo maneno? Come quickly. When you have a question, he's satisfied. He's satisfied. He's satisfied. Okay, then you don't raise your hand. When, okay. Okay. Now, this question about how do we raise up other pastors under us? How do we raise up people to serve God? Now, I will talk about this when I talk about how to do evangelism and raise some people to serve God by the power of the Holy Spirit. What I do is when I bring people to Jesus. Jesus, I always pray for them to experience the Holy Spirit. And I ask them what they have experienced. And then they said, well, the Holy Spirit brought peace or love or motivation. And then I will tell them. Now you experience the Holy Spirit like this. One day you can help other people. And all through the process, I will motivate them to, willing, to be willing to build up the relationship with God and try to bless other people. And in the process, I will observe who is really following God to serve God? Na sasa katika kipindi hicho pia nita kuwa nikiangalia kwa makini kuona ni nani ambaye tayari yako na moyo wa kumutumikia mungu. And these people who have the motivation to serve God, I will train them and build them up to serve God. Na hawa watu ambao wako na ule msukumo wa kumutumikia mungu, nita washika zahidi nilele kwa fundisha zahidi ili waendele katika uduma zahidi. So one day they can be, maybe become, some of them might become pastors. Ili kwa mba siku mwenye wawo pia watakua wachunga ni kama mimi. Now, how do I help them to be faithful? Nita wasaidia vipi nao pia wakwe wa minifu hawa watu? One thing very important that we teach all our members and people who serve God this teaching. One very important thing is to teach this teaching. I'm going to teach, I'm going to tell you. Kitu cha muhimu ambacho utawambia watu utafanya hawa, ambacho utakifanya ni hiki ambacho anataka kufundisha. This teaching is, whatever you do for God is like building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Ya kwamba unawafundisha chochote ambacho unamtumikia mungu ni kama kujenga katika musingi wa Christo Yesu. And then if you love God and serve God with a pure heart, you are building on a foundation that God is very happy and He will reward you. Kama unapenda mungu na unamfanyia mungu na unawajali watu wengine hapo basi, unajenga katika musingi ya mauli Christo Yesu na mungu atafraishwa sana na hiyo kazo na yifanyi. But if in the process you are not faithful, you sin, you lie, or you, or you do it for your own glory, you are tearing down what you have built. Lakini kama unafanya kazi yo ya uluma na wewe unawajaza uongo, wewe siu maminifu, inamanisa kwamba unafanya mambo hayo ili wewe mwenyewe ujitukuze. It's like you build on a wall and then you tear it down the next day. You build on it and you tear it down the next day. Ni kama vile leo unavyo jenga ukuta, unapo kuja kesho, unawangusha. Sina unahaza kujenga, unapo kuja kesho, unapomo, unawangusha. So I ask them, do you want to do that? You build on it and then you tear it down. Kwa hivyo nasema ato wakuliza je, mgelipenda kujenga na kubomo, ama mgelipenda kujenga na mjenge kwa mjenga na kusahau. And I tell them, you cannot run away from God. God will see your heart and everything you do. So God knows who is faithful. So in the whole process, I help them to be faithful. Now, but faithful means two things. One is faithful to God. One is faithful to the church. 
Aha, kuwa mwaminifu imebeba mambo mawili ya kwanza ni kuwa mwaminifu kwa Mungu na la pili ni kuwa mwaminifu kwa kanisa ambayo wewe uko ndani. I will help people to be faithful to God. Nitawasaidia watu wa kuwa mwaminifu kwa Mungu. And I encourage them and tell them the direction of my ministry. Na nitawahimiza na niwaonyeshe mwelekeo wa huduma wangu. My direction of ministry is I want to raise up more people to serve God. Ya kwamba mwelekeo katika huduma wangu ni kwamba nataka niwainue watu wengi ili watumikie Mungu. That we help people to have a good relationship with God and take care of their different problems in their sin. Ya kwamba unawahimiza watu wakamtumikie Mungu katika uaminifu na pia wakapate kushughulikia matatizo ambayo wanayo katika maisha yao. And we want to bless different churches and different countries. Na unawaambia kwamba mnaweza pia kubariki makanisa na hata kubariki mataifa mengine. So I'll ask them, are you willing to be part of this church to have this goal? Kwa hivyo anauliza kwamba je, mungelipenda kuwa mojapo ya hiki kikundi ambacho kinataka kubariki mataifa na makanisa mengine? Amen. And I want to say that not everyone agrees with our direction. Nataka kusema kwamba sio kila mtu atakubaliana na yale malengo ambayo tunayo ya kuenda kubariki mataifa na makanisa mengine. Sio kwamba kila mmoja atakubaliana nayo. If one day they want to leave the church and go to another church or do some other ministry, it's fine with me. Kama basi kuna watu ambao hawatakubaliana na ule mwelekeo ambao uko nao katika huduma na wangelipenda kutoka kwenda katika huduma zingine waachilie waende when i have this goal there will be always some people who will follow this goal yani unapokuwa na malengo kama haya sio kwamba kila mmoja kanisani ata hmm, atakubaliana na hayo malengo but there will always be some people who are not willing to follow that. Kuta kuwa na wengine ambao hawata kubaliana kufuata na hayo malengo uliyo yatoa. To me, it's okay. Kwa hivyo anasema kama ni yeye kwake ni sawa. Kama wangelipenda kwenda katika huduma zingine hana shida. Wacha wafanye nini? Wakweli. Because if we love God, God will bless us. Kwa sababu unapompenda Mungu, Mungu atakubariki. We don't have to control the people so they will only stay in this church. Sio kwamba sasa ni lazima watu hao washikilie kwamba wabaki tu kwenye hili kanisa hata wale wengine ambao ni mizigo. Kama wanataka kuondoka, wacha wafanye nini? Waondoke. And I have the heart. If they go to their church, they bless and their church is fine also. Na kama wataenda kwenye makanisa mengine na wakuwa wa baraka, pia ni la muhimu tunashukuru Mungu. Amen. So it's very important that I have a clear direction of this church and that people have this school would stay and be faithful to this church. Kwa hivyo ni la muhimu kwamba wewe kama mchungaji uweke basi mipangilio zako wazi kila mmoja kanisani afahamu kama kuna yule ambaye hatakubaliana nazo, ako na ruhusa ya kwenda and if someone from our church wants to start a ministry, it's fine, it's good, it's wonderful, we'll bless them. Na kama kuna mtu basi ya melipenda kuenda kuanzisha uduma kutoka kwenye hili kanisa, ayende malipengine anzisha, tutamusaidia na tunashukuru mu. So I answer the question by saying that I want to train people to be faithful to God all the time. Anasema natako malizia hilo suwala kusema kwamba atawasaidia watu wa waminifu kwa mungu kila wakati. And I try to help people to be faithful to this church. Na pia atawafundisha watu wa kwa waminifu kwenye hilo kanisa. But if they don't want to follow this direction of this church, they go to another church, I will let them go. Na kama hawataki kuambatana na mimi katika kufanikisha malengo ambayo tunayo kama kanisa wao wamebeba vitu wamekuwa wenye viburi nitawaachilia au kama wanataka kwenda waende mimi sina shida na but while they are in this church i will teach them to be faithful to this church also lakini kabla hawajaenda nitawafundisha wahakishe kwamba wao wamekuwa waminifu kwa Mungu that means don't gossip in the church yani inamaanisha kwamba wewe usiwe mtu wa umea kanisa in the church. Yani wewe usiwe mtu wa kuwatusi watu na kuwadharau wengine kanisani. Don't try to divide the church. Usiwe mtu ambaye unaparaganisha kanisa. If you have a different direction, let me know and then we will bless you and let you go. Kama wewe uko na njia nyingine ambayo ungelitaka, njoo tutadiliane mimi ni kama mchungaji na wewe. Tuone vile tutasaidia na kama ni kukusaidia uwele, tukusaidia uwele na rosa. But in the process, don't split the church. Lakini kama unamwelekeo tofauti na mambo ama malengo ya liyo wekwa na mtungaji, usiwe mtu wa kupasua kanisa. Wewe na malengo yako, ondoka uwende pole pole, ama ujalie na mtungaji, mwone mtasaidina na mtungaji. Okay, so have I answered this question? Amitibu hilo suwali. 
Is that fine? Okay, so the other, um, okay, another question is about how come churches that have good teaching have less people, and then churches that have, you know, sometimes bad doctrines and have more people? Swali ni hili. Lina kanisa ambalo, lina fundisha mafundisha ya kibibilia, na uaminifu katika mambo ya Mungu mbona linawashirika wachache na yale makanisa ambayo yanafundisha vitu vya uongo wanawashirika wengi zaidi tatizo liko wapi okay now when there are many people in a church it doesn't mean the church is blessed by god haimaanishi kwamba kanisa kama liko na washirika wengi haimaanishi kwamba hilo kanisa limebarikiwa na Mungu if people go to a church, they just want healing only, and they don't want to follow God. Kuna watu ambao wanakuja kanisani, hawataki kufata njia ya mungu, lakini wamekuja kwa sababu wana matatizo, wanataka wapone. They might have many people there, but everyone wants to be healed only. Kuna mweze kama kanisa hilo limejaa likuna watu wengi, lakini hawa watu wote, kila kilisa waleta hapu, mjungaja niyombe, nipone. But we also want to learn from them, why do people go there? Lakini pia hebu tukajifundisha na tujiulize kwa nini watu wengi wanaenda hapo? Because with the power of the Holy Spirit we can bring healing to people also. Ehe, kupitia nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu tutaweza kuleta uponyaji kwa watu. And then with good teaching we can bring some people to love God also. Na katika mafundisho mazuri tunaweza kuwainua watu wa Mungu katika viwango vya juu zaidi. And if this in this church everyone get a you know satisfying relationship with God and is satisfied in serving God they want to stay na unawe, kuna uwezekano kwamba watu wanaweza kuja kanisani alafu wawe wameshibishwa na injili inayohubiriwa pia wao wameshibishwa kwamba mahusiano yao na Mungu yako sawa wote wakae kanisani in some churches the pastors just want them to come and sit and listen and give money and that's all they want them to do Kuna makanisa mengine, wachungaji wengine, kazi yao ni kuamba. Wanataka kanisa likuwe limejaa watu wengi, ile watuwe sandaka kubwa wajinufaishe wa wenyewe. And we want to raise up people who have the heart for God and have the heart to bless people. And these people are fruitful. Lakini sisi nataka tuwe na watu ambao tunaweza kualea, tuwainuwe katika viwango vingine, ili kuamba wae waminifu kwa mungu. Amina. We also want to look at all the aspects of the church. Na pia nataka tuangalie mtazamo wote kuhusu kanisa. Do the people in the church care about people? Je, watu walioko kanisani wana wajali wengine kanisani? Do they pray for them and visit them and help them? Je, wana wana watembelea na kuwaombea na kuwaimiza? And does the church try to meet the needs of the people and help them? Na je, hilo kanisa ambalo wangu ndani Je, lina we, lina uwezo wa kuwafikia hawa watu kuwasaidia katika mahitaji yao? Does the church give opportunities for people to serve God? Je, hilo kanisa huwa linapea nafasi watu wengine ili wakamtumikie Mungu? So, we have to examine the different aspect of the church. Kwa hivyo lazima tuangalie sehemu tofauti za kanisa and see how we, we can be efficient in bringing people to the church. Tuone tunaweza fanya vipi kwa njia hiyo rahisi kuleta watu katika Kristo Yesu. Okay. Did I answer the question? Okay, now um, now I answer the other questions that um, Okay, what's the difference between the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the the fivefold ministry? Basi utofauti ni nini utofauti ulioko kati ya gharama za Roho Mtakatifu na huduma? Okay, the fivefold ministry is the the position, you know, what they do in the church. Aha, uduma zile uduma tano, sidiyo ni moja po zile kazi amazo we unafanya kanisa. So the fivefold ministry, the the apostle, the evangelist, the teachers, the pastor. Eni zile uduma tano kama vile walimu and the prophets, walimu na bi. Injilisti, chungaji na mtume. So these are positions in the church. Hizo ni zile nafasi ama sehemu ambalo zimo kanisani. And the spiritual gifts are many. There are many spiritual gifts. Lakini sasa unapata kwamba spiritual gifts, how do you say? Garama za rohoni. Garama za rohoni. Garama za rohoni. Garama za rohoni. 
Karama za rohoni sijazoea na hiyo. Karama za rohoni ni nyingi sana kanisani. Yeah, the five of ministry needs spiritual gifts to accomplish the, what they need to do. Na sasa kama mtu ako na zile huduma tano, anahitaji karama za roho mtakatifu ili zimsaidie kufanikisha huduma aliyo ndani. But some people who are not in a position, they might still have some spiritual gift like prophetic gift or some teaching gifts. They, they might still have this gift. Some people who are not a, a prophet can still have some prophetic gifts. Aha, unaweza pia kupata mtu ako na zile karama kwa mfano yeye ni yeye ni mtume lakini pia yeye ni nabii kuna uwezekano like some people who are not an evangelist they still have the gift of doing evangelism kuna watu wengine hawako katika ule huduma wa uinjilisti lakini wako na zile karama za kufanya uinjilisti so when we have this spiritual gift we want to build ourselves up according to the way of god kwa hivyo unapokuwa na mambo hayo yote la msingi ni kwamba ujijenge katika msingi wa Kristo Yesu. And then if this person is called by God, one day God will open the way for him to serve God. Na huyu mtu kwa kweli kama ana ule mwito wa Mungu, Mungu mwenyewe atamfungulia njia na malango za kwenda kufanya hiyo kazi. So the five ministries talk about people who are serving God in a church in a, in a formal way. Zile eh huduma tano ni zile ambazo zilizokuwa kanisani kulijenga kanisa na walikuwa wote wamejaliwa na Mungu and all Christians whether they have the position or not they still have spiritual gifts na hata kwa Kristo wote japo kuwa labda hauko katika huduma lakini wote wako na zile karama za roho mtakatifu kila mtu ana sehemu yake okay have I answered the question okay now about trinity anataka kuzungumza kuhusu utatu wa Mungu from the bible we know that Father is God. Katika Biblia tunajua kwamba Baba ni Mungu. And the Son of God, Jesus Christ is also God. Na tunajua kwamba mwana wa Mungu ambaye ni Yesu Kristo pia yeye ni Mungu. And the Holy Spirit is God. Na hata Roho Mtakatifu ni Mungu. But there are not three gods. Lakini sio miungu watatu. It's one God and three persons. Ni Mungu mmoja anaye anaeishi katika utatu. Three persons means they can exist independently. Aha. Sasa mambo haya anasema kwamba hawa haya majina matatu inamaanisha kwamba mtu huyu anaweza kujisimamia peke yake. But they are always together. Lakini wote wako pamoja. Penye mwana yuko Mungu yuko na penye Roho Mtakatifu yuko Mungu yuko. But it's very important to understand the Father is not the Son. Lakini pia ni vizuri uelewe kwamba Baba sio mwana and the Son is not the Holy Spirit. Na pia uelewe kwamba mwana sio Roho Mtakatifu. So in that sense is pro is Father, Son and Holy Spirit three persons are a three separate entities sasa mungu baba mwana roho mtakatifu ni vitu vitatu ambavyo viko na utofauti but is one god lakini ni mungu mmoja so jesus is god and he's also son of god kwa hivyo yesu ni mungu na pia ni mwana wa mungu now in the bible it says that father is the one who is in charge of everything Aha katika Biblia tunaona kwamba Mungu ndiye anayepanga mipango yote. Jesus has, you know, has all the divine power. Yesu ana ule umamlaka wa kiungu. But Jesus said when he came, he did what the Father said he would do. Lakini Mwana anasema nilipokuja nimekuja kufanya mapenzi ya Baba. And he said what Jesus what the Father told him to say. Na alisema kile alichowezeshwa na baba kusema. So he submitted to the father. Kwa hivyo yeye mambo yake yote anajibika kwa baba. But at the same time he is also God. Lakini pia ujue kwamba yeye ni Mungu and he's the son of God. Na pia ni mwana wa Mungu. So it it doesn't it doesn't uh, contradict. It doesn't contradict. Sio kwamba ni vitu vinapigana. Mambo haya lazima tukupeleke kwenye shule tukufundishe ndio uelewe. Utaki wa Mungu ni mtumu zaidi. Okay? Now as far as Father Son and Holy Spirit who is on earth here? 
the question swali ni kwamba kati ya Mungu mwana na roho mtakatifu ni nani aliyebaki na sisi humu duniani now Jesus said if not the father who draws people no one can come to me aha yes mu Yesu anasema hivi katika Yohana 6:45 ya kwamba kama sio baba kukuvuta hakuna yeyote anayeweza kuja. So the father draws people to Jesus. Kwa hivyo baba ndiye anayewavuta watu kwa Kristo Yesu. And Jesus knocks at the heart of people. Na Yesu anagonga kwenye mioyo za watu. He wants to enter our lives. Anataka kuingia katika maisha yetu. And the Holy Spirit moves in our heart. Na ye Roho Mtakatifu analeta ule msukumo ndani ya mioyo zetu. So we see from the Bible that Father, Son and Holy Spirit they all in heaven but they all also working in our lives. Tunaona kwamba Baba, Mwana, Roho Mtakatifu wanaishi mbinguni. Lakini katika hiyo hali pia wako na sisi hapa hapa. Amen. The Father doesn't just stay in heaven and sit there. Sio kwamba Baba yeye amekaa tu kule mbinguni na kubariki huko. He works in our lives all the time. Yeye anafanya kazi katika maisha yetu kila wakati. But the Bible has given the main responsibility of working Christians to the work of the Holy Spirit. Lakini sasa Baba ameachilia kazi nyingi kwa Roho Mtakatifu ili awe nasi akatusaidie katika kazi zetu za huduma. When we look at different passages when God brings some people it's the Holy Spirit that came upon them to move them. Tunaona kwamba katika mistari ya kibibilia wakati Mungu anapowainua watu, Mungu anaachilia Roho Mtakatifu ndiye anayekuja kuainua watu. Amen. And it's that Holy Spirit that gives us spiritual gifts. Hata hivyo ni Roho Mtakatifu anayetugawia zile karama za Roho Mtakatifu. And bring us to repentance and trust in Jesus. Na Roho Mtakatifu pia anayetusukuma ili tukakuwa na toba tutubu dhambi zetu and speak to us all the time. Na Roho Mtakatifu unana na sisi kila wakati. But at the same time the Father and the Son are doing the same thing too. Na unjue kwamba kwa kote Roho Mtakatifu yuko kuna Mwana na Mungu yupo. Okay? Now how come in the Bible it says plural? Let us make man in our image. Basi kwa nini Biblia nasema kwamba basi tukamfanye mwanadamu kwa mfano wetu? That is the Trinity speaking. Yaani huo ni utatu wa Mungu unajadiliana kule mbinguni. Let us make is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let us make men in our image. Yaani sasa katika uumbaji wako haujaungwa na mtu mmoja. Umeungwa na watu wako, watu watatu. Mungu, Baba, Mwana, Roho Mtakatifu wanasema tukamfanye mwanadamu kwa mfano wetu. And then in Isaiah chapter 6 I say it chapter 6 kwenye kitabu cha Isaiah sura ya 6 there God says who can I send who will go for us Mungu anauliza je ni mtume nani ni nani atakayekwenda kwa niaba yetu Now first is singular who can I send Ya kwanza anaongea akiwa mtu mmoja ni mtume nani and then who will go for us Alafu anamalizisha na kusema kwamba basi ni nani atakayeenda kwa niaba yetu So this is singular and plural. Sasa unapata mambo haya katika umoja na pia yako katika wingi. Singular is one God. Katika umoja ni Mungu mmoja. Plural is three persons. Na sasa anapo inapokuwa katika wingi ni watu watatu. And in Old Testament when God appears generally the theologians believe that is the son of God that appears. Aha. Katika agano la kale wakati Mungu alipokuwa akionekania watu wana theolojia wanatuambia kwamba ni Mungu mwana aliyekuwa akionekana. For instance, is God the son who appears to Moses? Kwa mfano, ni Mungu mwana aliyemuonekania Musa. And then Joshua saw this general of the army of Israel. Na Yoshua naye akaona wingi wa lile jeshi la Israeli. So that's a manifestation of God in Old Testament. Kwa hivyo hivyo ndivyo Mungu alivyokuwa akijifunua katika agano la kale. It should be Jesus Christ because only Jesus Christ has a human form. Na ni lazima awe alikuwa ni Kristo Yesu kwa sababu katika utatu wa Mungu Kristo Yesu ndiye anayo eh, anayeishi anayeonekana kama mwanadamu. Okay. Now, um, another question. After a person is saved and then still he has a from the evil spirit 
And some people say generation curse. I want to answer to this. Tunakuchimbulia swali ambalo mtu kama ameokoka imekuwaje tena bado anafuatwa na maroho machafu na lahana za ukozi na ufuat na yeye ameokoka yawezekanaje? In chapter uh, in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 2. Hakusoma katika kitabu cha Efeso sura ya kwanza mstari mdogo wa kwanza na wa pili. There it says said that non-Christians have the evil spirit moving in them. Inasema kwamba wakuri, wale watu ambao sio wa Kristo wako na roho chafu ambazo zinafanya kazi ndani mwao. So non-Christians are controlled by demons. They are not necessarily possessed with demons, but they are controlled. They are affected by demons. Hawa watu sio kwamba mapepo yanaishi ndani mwao, lakini mapepo ndio yanayowaelekeza cha kufanya. And it's very important when we believe in Jesus we really follow God, love God, and let God guide us so that we don't give a foothold to the devil. Na nila muhimu kwamba unapu hokoka, ukaache mungu wa tibiti maisha yako ayatunze, ili kwamba usidye ukafatwa na hawa mapepo wachafu. Some people believe in Jesus, but they still continue to let anger and frustration and greed and lust control them. Watu wengi wanamini kuristo yesu, lakini bado wanaishi katika dhambi. Then the Bible says he is giving a foothold to the devil. Hapo sasa unawacha mwanya wa ibilisi kuingilia maisha yako. Then Satan is still affecting his life. Na shetani ataendelea kuwaribu maisha yako. That is why Jesus said to Peter, Ndo sababu Yesu wakamwabia Petero, Satan depart from me. Shetani niondoke. That means at that time Peter was affected by Satan. Inamanisha kwa wakati hule Petero alikuwa sasa so it's very important for us to understand it's very important to have a close relationship with God and say no to all sins and negative thinking and negative emotions. In John chapter 5 verse 14 Katika Yona, Yohana sura ya chapter 5.14 Yohana sura ya tano msai wa kumina nene Yohana sura ya tano msai wa kumina nene Jesus said to the man here of 38 years of sickness Yesu wakamambia mwanaume yule yule alie kuwa mgonji wa kwa mbra miaka telatini na minani Sin no more unless the worst thing will happen to you Usitende dhambi tena manaki kama uletenda dhambi mambo mabaya ya takutendekea zaidi so that means if we sin, we give into the devil and worse thing, bad things will happen to us. That's why when we cast out demons from people, we need to teach them how to build up a relationship with God and how to take care of the problems in their lives. Now in this few days we'll talk about how to take care of different problems in our life. If we don't take care of our different problems in our life and don't have a good relationship with God, then Satan still has a foothold in our life. Kama hata ukua na ule uwezo wakujishugulikia sisi wanyewe, tuingia katika dhambi, shetani bado hata kuwa nafasi katika maisha yetu. And then he will come to kill and steal and destroy. Na hata kuja kuhiba, kuwaribu na kuhua. So that is why some people still have the attacks of Satan. Ndiyo maana watu wengi bado wanafatu wa na shetani. Now I want to say this, many people have understanding of Satan which is not from the Bible. Nataka kusema hivi, watu wengi wana mwelewa huyu shetani, pasipo kuwa, yani wana mwelewa shetani, kando na vile maandiko inabe mfunua shetani. The Bible says that if we follow God, we have a close relationship with God and reject the devil, the devil will run away from us. Maandiko ya sema kuwamba unapo mfuata mungu, uwe mwaminifu kwa mungu na umuite mungu, inamanisha kuwamba unapo mfukuza shetani, ata toroka penye upo. And Jesus said, I've given you authority to travel on snakes and scorpions. Na maandiko ya sema kuwamba mungu atakupa mnufu, utakanyaga nyoka, utashika nyoka, Kanyage nge, hawata kuduru. 
and to overcome all the power of the enemy na utashinda majaribu yote ya mwovu and nothing can harm you na hakuna chochote ambacho kitakudhuru wewe so we, we have a close relationship with God and take care of our problems na muhimu ni kwamba uwe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu na ujue jinsi ya kujilinda Satan cannot attack shetani hatakuja akufuatilie if we say well I still have some sins. Ukisema kwamba ah bado ninazo dhambi zingine. Then we ask God to forgive us. Hebu nikamwombe Mungu alisamehe. Then we are truly repentant. Tuwe kwamba tumeomba toba tukimaanisha. And God will forgive us and protect us. Na Mungu atusamehe na atatutunza. So Christians should not be afraid every day when will Satan attack me. Kwa hivyo Mkristo wewe usikuwe na yale mambo ya kusema kwamba he ni lini ibilisi shetani atakuja kunipiga vita. You know this the armor of God in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 una uh, unagundua kwamba ile ngao ya Mungu katika Waefeso 6. It talks about truth and righteousness and the gospel and uh, in as way inazungumza kuhusu ukweli haki ya Mungu na kuwa mwaminifu kwa Mungu. And it says that when you have the shield of faith, then you can stop all the fiery darts of Satan. Inasema kwamba kama una ile ngao ambayo inazuia uongo wa shetani basi wewe utafaulu maisha. So we stop this attack of Satan by faith in God. Bai kwa hivyo sisi tunashinda haya mapigo ya shetani tukiwa na imani kwa Mungu. Now let me say this I I know this is very different teaching from some of you what you have heard. Wacha niseme hili najua hili ni tofauti ama litakuwa mpya sana kwa ile mafundisho ambayo labda nyinyi mmeyazoea. Some people think to fight against Satan this is the way they fight. Watu wengi wanafikiria kwamba kupigana shetani hivi ndivyo inavyo inavyofaa kupigana. They will say Satan leave the church. Ni kusema kwamba Shetani ondoka kanisani. Satan leave my family. Shetani wacha na familia. Satan leave my home. Shetani toka kwa mama na You look over Ephesians chapter 6 it doesn't say that unaposoma hicho kitabu cha Waefeso sura ya 6 how we learn hivyo when we cast out demons from people then we say in Jesus name demons come out kwa hivyo unapofukuza mapepo unawafukuza kwa jina la Kristo Yesu na mapepo yanaondoka but if you just say okay the uh, the evil spirit of anger comes out The person still would have anger. Lakini unaposema kwamba wewe mapepo muondoke huyu, huyu mtu mapepo ataendelea kuwa na yeye. And the person has lust and you cast out the demons of lust, he will still have lust. Hata huyu mtu akiwa mtu wa tamaa na unafukuza tamaa, haitamuondokea because he need to have a close relationship with God and take care of the sins to stop the work of Satan. Na muhimu ni kwamba lazima uwe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu na ujue jinsi ya kujitenga na dhambi wewe utafaulu mambo. Yes, to stop the work of Satan is not just shouting. Satan go away, Satan go away, Satan go away. Kusimamisha kazi ya shetani sio tu kupiga sauti kubwa kusema shetani niondoke, shetani niondoke. So some people they just all day long they will cast out demons from the church and from this area and they think they take care of the problem of Satan. Kwa hivyo watu wengi kazi yao ni kungangana na kufukuzana na mapepo wanafikiria kwamba hapo ndio wanafaulu hapo haufaulu. When you look at Ephesians chapter 6 you know that it's the relationship with God. Unapoangalia kwenye hicho kitabu cha Efeso sura ya 6 utapata kwamba ni uhusiano wako na Mungu. And take care of all the problems in our life na kushughulikia matatizo ambayo unayo katika maisha yako. That follow God totally na ufuate Mungu kwa njia iliyo sawa sawa. And God will protect us. Na Mungu atakulinda. So this is one area which I disagree with some people. Hiyo ndio sehemu ambayo mimi wasikubaliana nangi na watu wengi. They will say oh I have a fever oh Satan is attacking me today. Mtu hata akiumwa na kichwa ai huyu ni shetani amekuja kunitembelea kwa hiyo. Oh uh, my my spouse is fighting with me or Satan is attacking me. Oh mume wangu kwa jamani anapigana na mkewe huyu ni shetani amewaingilia. Now I will say to you if you have sickness take care of your health. Ana kama wewe ni mgonjwa jamani nenda hospitalini katibiwe. It's not necessary the attack of Satan. Sio kwamba ukiwa mgonjwa lazima ni shetani wewe nenda hospitalini fanya nini? Paul said to the Galatians, Paul said to the Galatians. Paulo anawaambia wa Galatia, when I first came to you is because of sickness. Nilipokuja kwenu mara ya kwanza ni maana yake ilikuwa ugonjwa. And he said about to Timothy because you have sickness many times so you can take some wine. Akamwambia Timotheo kwa sababu ya tumbo lako na matatizo kunywa mvinyo kidogo. 
So the Bible does talk about some godly people who have sickness too. Hata Biblia inazungumza kuhusu watu wa ugonjwa jamani. Kama wewe ni mgonjwa tafuta tafuta vitu ungefanya nini? Mesa Sickness is not necessary attack of Satan. Sio kwamba ukiwa mgonjwa kila wakati ni shetani. But if a person live a lousy life, he doesn't take care of his body and then he has sickness, then it can be a combination of attack of Satan. Basi kama mtu anaishi maisha tu yake shagalabaga la inamaanisha kwamba basi huyu mtu ameishi maisha ambayo ibilisi ameyatawala. Kwa hivyo anaweza kuwa mgonjwa kwa sababu ya maisha mabaya unayoishi. Or he has a lot of anger and worry and then he has sickness you can say in some way it's a attack of satan because he allows satan to attack him all the time labda mtu huyu anaishi maisha ya kukasirika kila wakati kuchokozana kila wakati tunaweza sema kwamba labda amemwachilia shetani nafasi ametawala maisha yake i met some and they say i don't cast out demons from people because the people the demons from the people may attack me Asha wewe ukutana na mtu akamwambia kwamba yeye hawezi kufukuza mapepo kwa watu kwa sababu gani? Atakapofukuza wale mapepo mapepo wale watarudi waniingi wamuingie ndani. This is unbiblical. Hiyo si ya Biblia. Jesus said told us to cast out demons. Ma Yesu anasema kwamba ametuita ili tuwafukuze mapepo. How would Satan be able to attack us when we follow God's plan? Basi shetani huyu atakufuata vipi kama wewe unafuata mpango wa Mungu? Okay. And then the thing that is spread among many people is about the generation curse. Kitu kingine ambacho watu wamekishikilia sana ni kuhusu zile laana za ukoo. Now, you might be surprised to hear this from me. And labda utashangazwa na kile ambacho nataka kukizungumza. The basis of the generation curse idea came from the Old Testament when God said, if you sin, I was, you know, get after you in, you know, three generations. Aha. Chimbuko la hii kitu ambacho tunasema kwamba dhambi za za ukoo linatokana na agano la kale ambapo Mungu alisema kwamba unapotenda dhambi Mungu atabeba ghadhabu hiyo hadi kizazi chako cha tatu. But God doesn't say I will curse you. Lakini Mungu hajasema kwamba nitakulaani. The sin will have a consequence to affect the children. Hizo dhambi Madhara yake ni kwamba yataendelea hadi ilete madhara hata kwa watoto. But if the child love God and obey God in every way, lakini huyu mtoto anapoendelea kuwa na akampende Mungu na mfuate Mungu katika kila njia zote, Jesus took away all the curses. Oh, Yesu alitudolea laana zote. It is very important though it's not God who curses. Na ni lazima ujue kwamba sio Mungu anayetulaani. But is You know the consequence of sin and the punishment of sin is not cursing. Kwa hivyo haya tu ni matokeo ya dhambi sio kwamba ni laana. So if the child loves God and obey God and take care of his problem then Satan has no way to attack him. Kama mtu huyu basi ijapokuwa wazazi wake walitenda dhambi lakini huyu mtoto anapoendelea kuwa na akampende Mungu amfuate Mungu and yeye lahana zote zimeondolewa na Kristo Yesu and he be blessed by God na yeye atabarikiwa na Mungu so what i'm saying is many people seek other ways to solve problems kila nasema ni hiki watu wengi wanatafuta njia mbadala ya kumaliza matatizo yao they will try to cast out the demons of lust and anger from the area what are they looking at na mapepo ya uko mapepo ya laana kitu kama hizo and also they will trace us ancestors and say okay maybe it's the sin of your father the sin problem that this influence will not be with us lakini kama kwa kweli tuna tuna tunaenda tunatubu kutubu kuliko sawa sawa mambo haya yote hayawezi atafuata so i You know, I don't think that people are problem because of gen generation curse. Kwa hivyo mimi siamini kwamba watu wana matatizo kwa sababu ya laana za uko. It's because they don't have a close relationship with God and also they let the sin control their lives. Ni kwa sababu tu hawana mahusiano mazuri na Mungu kwa hivyo wameacha dhambi zimetawala maisha yao. In a way they let the parents and the grandparents sins affect them. Na sasa kwa hiyo njia wanaacha zile dhambi zilizofanywa na mababa zetu wa kitambo zinatuadhiri. But we can be free from this. Lakini tunaweza kuwa huru na mambo haya. Now what is the problem with wearing about generation curse? What is the problem with wearing about generation curse? Basi wait. 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 
What is the problem with wearing about generation curse? Shida ni nini ambayo tukianza kuzijali sana zile lahana za mababu zetu? And wearing about the tech of Satan. What's the problem with that? Shida ni nini ambayo inatufanya sisi Tuna, tunapofikiria kuhusu mambo ya shetani tunakuwa na uoga mwingi. The problem it will cause people to have fear. Yaani shetani kile anafanya ni hiki anakuja katika maisha yako anakujaza na uoga. They will say I don't know when Satan will attack me. Sasa unaishi tu unatetemeka unasema kwamba sijui shetani ataingilia mlango upi leo. I don't know how to get rid of all the attack of Satan. Na sasa sijui nitafanya vipi ili nipige hizi vitu za shetani na nishinde. But the Bible already told us very clearly. Lakini Biblia imetuambia na imetuambia kwa wazi zaidi. To have a close relationship with God, kuwa na uhusiano na Mungu, have faith in God and will stop all the fiery darts of Satan. Na uwe na imani na Mungu, Mungu atasimamisha kazi zote za shetani. So the Bible tells us don't fear. Biblia inatuambia kwamba tusiwe waoga. But these people fear all the time. Lakini watu hawa wana uoga kila wakati. Satan is attacking me. Shetani ananifukuza. That's unnecessary. Hiyo haifai. When we trust in God, we don't have to worry and fear. Kama unamwamini Mungu haufai kuwa muoga na uwe mtu ambao unaogopa zaidi. I go to different countries to cast out demons from people and teach people to obey God. Yeye anaenda katika nchi mbalimbali kufukuza mapepo na kufundisha watu kufanyia Mungu kazi. When I take care of the problems in my life and have a close relationship with God, anapokuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu na kujilinda yeye kuhusu maisha yake, I don't see the attack of Satan. Yeye hajawahi ona ibilisi ya kufukuza. But some people said Hiyo watu wengine wanasema you go to different countries you can pick up the evil spirit there. Wewe mbona unaenda kwenye mataifa mengine inawezekana kwamba utakuja na yale mapepo ya huko. Jesus said go to the nations to do it. Yesu alisema nendeni katika mataifa na ulimwenguni mfanye. But these people say don't go there. Lakini hao watu nao wanasema usiende. So I you know I I see the problem with this which is not from the Bible. Kwa hivyo mimi ninaona tatizo hapa sio tatizo la kibiblia.